I love it. I love it. We've got a couple more questions from the judges. And, of course, what message would you like to share to other young women? And it may be that, just basically that, but to other young women to encourage them to participate in the Miss America system. Well, first of all, it's not, you know, pageants aren't for everyone. Right. But if you're someone who loves to be involved in your community, if you're someone who has um, the, you want to share your talent on stage, that's a great way. Um, if you are someone who's pursuing scholarship and hanging right. off to school, this is the world, the world's, I mean, not just in the United States, the world's number right. one provider of scholarship for women. In the world? Yes, in the wow. world. $45 million we gave away last year in scholarship. Wow. So if you're looking for a way to receive a scholarship for school, wow. um, you, and you don't have to win the crown to receive a scholarship. You can win a talent award, you can win a community service award, you can right. just place, you know. Um, going to Miss America, each girl just for going to Miss America got right. $3,000 in scholarship. Wow. I didn't know that. So you don't have to win. It's just a right. great way to get a um, scholarship for your education right. and to say that, you know, you'll always be able to say, yep, I competed in a pageant when I was a young girl, take it for whatever you <laughs> sure. want. You know, but it's a way to really build your confidence and self-esteem. So I say go for it. That's great. That's great. we got less than 10 minutes, so I want to make sure we get to some of those other questions, for even sure. though these are great. But how does Miss America spend her days off? Obviously, we know you can't drive, right? <laughs> so you've got to uh, sit back a little bit. Uh, well, it just depends on where I am, but usually I like to take that time to exercise. Right. Um, I make exercise, some form of exercise, a part of my daily routine. Sure. Um, but I really like to take the time to go to a gym and do cardio as well right. as Pilates, which I really sure. love to do. You love Pilates. Um, I do. I adore Pilates. It's a great workout. But um, And it depends on how tired I'm feeling. Maybe just relax in the hotel or maybe go out and shop or see some historic sites in a city sure. and um, catch up on phone calls, write thank you notes. That's usually what I spend my days doing, catching up. Does your your family follow you at all? I mean, do they get to travel and rendezvous with you anywhere? How do you get um, back to Michigan? Is this a year, kind of like being overseas, essentially? It, it, or, it, yeah. You know, it kind of it is, like a deployment right. of service, you know. Right. But um, whenever I'm in Michigan doing events, my parents usually drive to see me. So right. about once a month, I'm able to see my family. That's great. That's great. Lastly, from the judges, you're never in one place for any length of time. How do you know... Um, how do you know, since you're not, right. how do you know you're making a difference in any of those communities? Oh, my goodness. Well, I feel very fortunate. I receive so many letters. I receive thank you letters from organizations that I work with, um, but also from young women. And that's something that really is, makes me very happy when I work and when I do events for my platform. I receive right. um, letters from young women in treatment centers for eating disorders okay. across the country. Um, Children's Miracle Network, I receive letters from this Children's Miracle Network right. and their families. Um, I'm able to visit children in hospitals across the country, and then afterward I'll receive letters from that hospital. Right. I'll receive photos. Um, we work with Children's Miracle Network pretty frequently, so sure. Children's Miracle Network continues to send me from events. They send me um, collages of photos from our event and the feedback, the response that they've gotten from right. people. I just continue to receive correspondence from people that I've worked with all over the country. That's great. And something else that's really neat, too, is eating disorders aren't talked a whole lot about in the media. Um, they're talked about maybe just like on the cover of a glamorous magazine, like, right. oh, look at the star, it has an eating disorder, but you don't hear much about what's actually causing this, what can we do to prevent this, right. um, the stories of recovery and of hope. Mm -hmm. And because I've been able to talk about my experience a lot in the media, especially right after Miss America, there's a media blitz. Um, I just saw recently an article in Time Magazine about right. the pressures uh, that the media puts on young women to be thin. What does it mean to be successful and how appearance relates to that? And I thought, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, the fact that I've been talking about this, the fact that um, people who work in, in the media and in the press right. are going to, it sticks in their brain. It plants sure. a seed. So it makes them more willing to pick up on that kind of story. It's written by Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And uh -huh. I thought, wow, how neat that. I am helping to make this a prevalent issue that right. there will be an article in Time magazine right. about eating disorders and the effect they have on young women. I thought, I love it. wow, that is awesome. And that shows that the work that I'm doing is hopefully planting a seed in people's heads and, and making them, you know, recognize the issue and, and report on it. And that is, that Kirsten, makes me feel golly, so good. Kirsten, you've got to be feeling so, great. Thank absolutely. You. Yes, absolutely. That is tremendous. Well, of course, so many aspects of anorexia nervosa that a lot of folks don't know about, but any numbers of uh, eating disorders, whether it's Right. Bulimia, it's not only whether it's uh, over, uh, overeating for children, childhood Absolutely. obesity, that's probably a big deal. It is huge. Right. People just think that an eating disorder is a desire to be thin, but that is not the case. Right. It is, it is the, the manifestation of emotional issues and of emotional turbulence in food and on your diet and on your weight. And right. you can't say that countless people in this country do not struggle with an unhealthy relationship with food and with their body. Oh it's God. about, and it's not only anorexia, it's bulimia as well, right. it's overeating, it's night eating syndrome, which is something people don't talk a lot about, it's food addiction, it's obesity. Oh, yeah. 
Um, it's taking out our problems and, and, and any struggles or stresses that you have in your life on food. Right. And so many people struggle with that. And what it is, is it's about body acceptance. It's about accepting that all different body shapes and sizes are beautiful. Right. It's about moderation and about a desire to be a healthy individual, both outside and inside. And that's something that all of us can learn from and all of us struggle with. But we need to be very careful about how we address weight and food issues with our young people especially. There are really issues there of trying to make sure folks understand that Miss America is more about inner beauty yes. than outer beauty. Just that same comment about your nails. I mean, so many folks think it's about nails and hair and right. external beauty and not at all associated that it's a beauty pageant. And, of course, right. kicking off in uh, the 20s, it may have been about swimsuits or otherwise, Absolutely. but clearly... As organizations change, people change. And Absolutely. And that's the great thing about this program. It has evolved with the, with the times. Right. It's gone through World War II. It's gone through the 50s. Right. It's gone through the cultural movement of the 60s and feminism. Right. And in 1988, the first platform was introduced, Miss America going and speaking about an issue. Oh, so yeah. the image of Miss America continues to change. Um, one thing that... I find really inspiring is being able to work on my platform, obviously, and encourage this idea that, yes, we as women, it would be silly to say that we don't love to feel beautiful, that we don't like to, that some women don't like to get dressed up and, and oh, feel yeah. beautiful. You know, that is a part of, you know, that's the style portion of the crown. But more importantly is about the fact that we are able to be stylish and we are able to have a brain and speak intelligently about mm -hmm. an issue and to be a strong, upstanding woman. And who doesn't want to say that I am a complete woman, I embrace my femininity in all aspects and the sure. fact that I feel that I can walk into a room and feel confident in the way that I look and also the way that I speak and also what's in between my ears. I think that that is incredible and that is something to be proud of. And, you know, it. again, it's not for everyone, but for the women who compete in this program, they'll tell you that there's nothing more empowering. Right. That is powerful. We could almost end the interview there, but we got a few minutes, Kirsten. i, I got to say, on behalf of so many folks, uh, they clearly need knowing those steps to get there. Yes. For you, was it something that in, instilled by a parent, was it instilled by a great mentor at an early age, by a teacher who stepped up, by seeing an empowered woman who's... Um. who's yeah, I had, incredible, I had incredible role models all my life of women, uh, not only teachers, but women who competed in this program who I looked up to when I was little. Right. Also, actually, an exceptional role model for me and my idea of what it means to be a woman, a strong woman, is, is you know, people always say this, but my mom, she struggled with, she had breast cancer. She had right. six years that she has been in remission from her cancer, and she's cancer-free. But talk about an assault on a woman's femininity, something like oh, breast cancer, yeah. which is a horrible illness right. that affects millions of women. Mm -hmm. um, but she she was able to turn that around. Now she is working as a nurse in our church um, right. since having, I mean, she's always been a nurse, but now she's devoted her time and her service and her energy in our church. And there have been, since her cancer, there have been about 10 or 12 women in our church that have been diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, so seeing her use her struggle that was extremely personal and extremely life-altering to now help other people, she's been right. able to be not only a mentor of faith, but uh, someone to help these women who are going through this turbulent time in their lives. Right. She's turned turned that assault around and been able to help other people. And seeing that, seeing that, well, I struggled with something, but I don't have to just say that, well, yes, I struggle with that and move on and continue in me mode. I can yeah. turn that around and say, each of us is given struggles in our lives. What do we do with that? We use it to help other people who are going through the same thing. So she's been an incredible role model for me, not only in faith, but in character. That's and great. showing that you can go through something like that and still feel beautiful as a woman and still offer your service to others. I love it. I love to hear you talk about your mother. And I love my mother, of course, Thank as you. the father of a girl. My <laughs> poor dad had three sons. He doesn't have that experience. But as the father Aww. of a girl, would you ever call yourself a daddy's girl? Is oh, there, yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm a total right. daddy's girl. Oh, I yeah. absolutely adore my Get daddy, down. and he's wonderful. So. Wow, that's yeah. very nice. And on behalf of all guys around the country, of course, the idea of Miss <laughs> America. Are you able to, I mean, just the idea of getting out, being on your own, as you said, deployed essentially for a year. Are you right. able to get out and like hang out with guys or, uh, or is it mostly with girls during your year off? Well, mostly it's my traveling companion. Of course, that's right. <laughs> um, who you is, met one of them here. Who yeah. is so much fun. Right. But you are allowed to date if someone comes along if, and they ask you on a date. Yeah. And of course, you have to be responsible. You have to of be a course. responsible adult. That's right. Um, but Miss America is allowed to have a personal life and I will say, well, keep my private life private. But <laughs> you are allowed, as long as you know things don't interfere with your job, to see a gentleman, yes. That's tremendous. That's <laughs> tremendous. You know, as you think for you, the, the most important position to get across to anyone, whether you're meeting a young woman and encouraging her to get into the pageant, or if it's meeting a, a Vietnam veteran who's yes. too blessed to be stressed, 
the most important position you want to get across to anyone that you get out to meet? Is it, is it just the idea of making sure to drive home that point? Is it the idea about the platform? It's about the fact that I really, really encourage this feeling of, of self-worth and what does it mean to serve others and what does it mean to get outside of yourself. And that's something that you can talk, talk, talk about, but you need to be an example. Because so much more is learned without words. So much more is learned by just ed, um, observing the way someone behaves, observing the way that someone interacts with other people. And so I try to know that inherently in myself first. And that came, that feeling of self-worth and of self-acceptance came through my recovery from my eating disorder. And that's what I just try to be. And my faith helps me immensely too. Yes. As I just pray that I will just be, I will say the words that need to be said. I will touch the people's lives who are most willing to receive that. And that I will be able to be used and, and be a servant my entire year and I think that people pick up so much more on those things that aren't said and so I just try to be the very best role model for young women that I can be in in feeling comfortable as a woman and putting service first in my life. Paul's very clear in Romans talking about running the race so as to win the yes, prize absolutely. and it's great to hear a beautiful young woman talking about God yes. and Christ's role in their life. The well, difference he's made in your life has been absolutely well. It's it's been because this happened to me so unexpectedly. It's taught me to trust in a way that I never thought I could. And so I just have to say that it was it was God. It was nothing that I did. It was completely. So that's why you just have to let it go and let God. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Yes, Person. of course. Thank you so absolutely. much. Absolutely. Stay tuned. A little more Carolina people with Miss America, Kirsten Hagler, coming up next. Isn't it great here in Kirsten talk about the four points of the crown? So special, style, success, scholarship, and service. I think more important if you've sat here the last 30 minutes, you see she's got a fifth point in the crown. It's a woman who steps out and talks about her faith in Christ and the center role that that, that star, that point in the crown, right there in the center of the crown. Think about it, a beautiful young woman who could talk about anything, could talk about her platform, could talk about Young Women in America instead brings everything back to God, the centerpiece right there in the crown. Take the time to learn more about Miss America, MissAmerica.org, and about Kirsten Hagelin and all the amazing things she's doing. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Kirsten. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Great.